Okay, so let's take a look at this graph here and let's figure out what's happening with this graph. Okay, so we can think of this graph from the, the res domain restriction perspective and we can say, okay, what is, a, what is my boundary, domain boundary? It's gonna be when it's equal to zero. So I know that my domain boundary is gonna be at x equals two. Okay, so x equals two. Now I just need to figure out from that, am I gonna to go to the right from here or am I gonna to go to the left? Okay, so in this case here, if I just plug in some numbers, as x gets bigger, I'm gonna get more negative. So as I start at two and I go this way, well, that's not possible because I'm square rooting negatives. If I get smaller and more negative, I subtract a negative, I end up getting positives. So I'm able to go in this direction. Okay, so using the domain boundary restriction, not being able to square root negatives, I can kind of figure out what this graph looks like. Okay, so it's going to start at 2, and I'm going to go to the left of 2. Okay, so I end up with my domain looking like this. X is going to be less than 2, okay, and it's a continuous variable. So that's one way I can do it. Again, we have the other perspective of transformations. Well, I know that this is my transformation notation. And if I undo that notation, I get xn equals, uh, I'm going to go plus 2, sorry, minus 2. And then I'm going to flip it. Okay. So in this case here, I'm going to do horizontal shift left 2. And then it's a horizontal flip. Okay. So that left 2 ends up to the right. So that's consistent. It's, it gets shifted to the left and it gets flipped across and the whole graph is flipped. So it's pointing to the left instead of the right. So we could actually think of this in terms of the transformation and understand what the graph's going to look like once I transformed it. I could also, by the way, equivalently do flip first and then shift last. And that might be a little bit easier way to understand it, because if I flip the original graph, I'm pointing in this direction, and then I shift it to the right. Okay, and that will give me to where the black graph is. Okay, so that is another way we can then think of it. We can think of what is the graph going to look like now, based on my transformation. So, and we get the same result. But again, there's a two. Those are two different perspectives. We want we can let do one way or the other way, or you can use one to complement the other strategy and the other way of thinking. Let's take a look at this one. So g, this is going to be a square root function. Okay, so we can kind of think of the domain of this uh, to start with. We can think of this as uh, it's going to be a graph that's going to be shifted to the left. Okay, so I'm using my transformation perspective here. I'm going to shift it to the left, and it's going to go like that. Okay, so we know that it's starting at negative 8. Okay, so that's the x position, but we've got something going on with the range here. So we're just going to do this in a different color. Okay, so something's going on with the range. So what's the range boundary? Well, we know the square root starts at 0. Okay, so it's going to be y equals 0. The range of this function is going to usually be the normal function goes to infinity from zero up. But what's happening here is a transformation. So we're flipping it upside down. And if I flip this graph upside down and stretch it, okay, I'm going to get a graph that looks like this. So my new domain, no, my new range is going to be instead of y, zero, and up, I'm going to start at zero and I'm going to go down. Okay, so I'm at zero but I'm going to go down from zero and that's going to be my range. And I can figure that out from my transformation. I flip that graph. Okay. We can also kind of think that, well, square root is always positive. If I multiply it by negative, it's always going to be negative. So that's another way of doing it. But that seems to me easier to do this, thinking of this as a transformation. We started at this point, we flip it upside down and stretch it. Yeah, it's a, it's the domain, the range is going to be from zero to negative infinity. So the transformation of this is going to be a vertical flip and a vertical expansion. 
by 2. Okay, so that's going to give us this new domain, new range based on going the opposite direction of what we started with.